welcome to lecture 9 of module 3 of the course called Game Theory and Economics. Uh, so far what we have do been do doing is that we have been taking up several applications of uh, the idea of Nash equilibrium uh, and uh, what we have uh, done so far are the cases are of Kurno equilibrium, uh, Bartram equilibrium and electoral competition. Today we shall look into another uh, separate field of application of Nash equilibrium which is known as war of attrition. So, war of attrition is uh, basically trying to model situations where there are two parties who are fighting with each other over some common uh, prey for example, maybe these two parties are two hunters or it can be a more general case of two people fighting over any common resource while fighting they are inflicting damages to each other. So, fighting is costly to both and as soon as I give up fighting that is I concede uh, then the other party gets that object for which I have been fighting. Uh, and the problem is that <coughs> right at the time when I give up all throughout this uh, all this time I have been fighting so that has been costly. And as the at, at that point when I give up, I lose the object, and there is this cost of fighting also. So I get a minus payoff in that case. And uh, when the object goes to my rival, there is some valuation that he derives from that object. But he has been fighting also with me, so that cost of fighting has to be deducted from his valuation to find out what is his final payoff from that uh, from this entire exercise. So, this is more or less the setting. Uh, so, this model in a sense it tries to uh, generalize the case of what we have seen before, it was the hog dove game. So, in hog dove game there were two parties who are fighting over some object and each party can uh, take two sorts of action, it can be aggressive or it can be uh, passive. And depending on the aggression and pa passivity their uh, payoffs are determined. Here also we are trying to look at similar situation where uh, this idea of giving up could be thought of as the, as the action of being passive. Whereas, if you are continue to fight, you are being aggressive. So, this is the case then. So, there are two hunters, let us say. So, these are the players. Actions, what are they choosing here? They are choosing at what point of time they are going to concede. So, T it can vary from 0 to infinity is the concession time. Which a player chooses. And thirdly, preferences this is given by the following uh, payoff function. Suppose I am talking about the payoff of player i, then uh, payoff of player i depends on the concession time it has chosen which is T i and it also depends on the time that its rival has chosen which is T j. So, this is given by minus 
T i if T i is less than T j, which means if I uh, is the player which gives up first, which concedes first, then whatever time it has chosen to fight, which is T i, is uh, just the total loss, this T i is the total loss that it is accruing and that is why minus T i is the payoff that it is getting. By the way, in this model, <coughs> we are going to represent this time. Uh, in the same unit as the valuation of the object. So, one can think that uh, in that one minute that I uh, keep on fighting with my rival is worth 1 rupee uh, and rupee is the unit with which I try to denote the value of that object also. What happens if the time that I am devoting to fight is same as the time that he is my rival is devoting to fight. So, if T i is equal to T j then what happens? At that time uh, in that case uh, there is a possibility of half that I will get the object. It is not sure that I will get the object because he has also given the same amount of time in fighting with me. So, in that case I get half of v i, v i is how I value the object. Uh, so, v i this index of i is coming because the valuation of the object can vary from person to person. How I value the object might be different from how my rival values the object. So, v i is different from v j in general. So, half the probability uh, that I will get the object, half multiplied by v i is the expected uh, value of the object to me. From that I subtract the time I spent in fighting that is T i and I get the payoff. If my rival concedes first, concedes earlier than me, then I get the object. So, I get v i minus the time that he has spent in fighting with me because right at the time when he is giving up I am getting the object. So, when he is giving up he has fought for T j units of time and that is the amount of time I also devoted in fighting with him. So, that is the time that is the uh, that is the time that the value of which I have to deduct from the valuation of the object. So, that is what I am doing here v i minus t j if t i is greater than t j. So, this is how the payoff functions of both the players look like if i is equal to 1 j is equal to 2 if i is equal to 2 j is equal to 1. Now, before we try to find out what is the Nash equilibrium, <coughs> here the policy that we are going to take to find the Nash equilibrium is the same strategy that we have been following so far. We are going to construct the best response functions and try to see at what points or point they intersect with each other, those points will be the Nash equilibrium. Now, before we try to find out what are the best response functions of these two players. Let us try to figure out what is going on here. Now, obviously, my payoff from fighting from this war uh, is dependent on the time that he, that is my rival, is spending in fighting with me. Now, if I know that my rival is going to spend not a long time, very short period of time to fight with me. Uh, in that case it is worthwhile for me to see him off to fight with him uh, because I know that he is going to give up after a brief period of time. Uh, so, if I devote that time in fighting with him I will get the object and if the valuation of the object is quite a bit then I am getting some positive payoff out of 
the, this fighting. So, what becomes important is how T 2 is, if I am the player 1, how T 2 is compared to my valuation that is V 1. So, that is becoming crucial. Is T 2 greater than V 1 or is T 2 less than V 1? If T 2 is less than V 1, then it is worthwhile for me to fight. On the other hand, if T 2 is very high suppose, <coughs> in that case it might be greater than V 1 also. If it is greater than V 1, then it is no way uh, worthwhile for me to fight with him, because longer I fight, the more costly it is for me. And so, uh, in that case I should give up immediately, I should not fight. So, this, these are the, these are the basic ideas which will influence the result of this model. Let us try to look at it uh, in a more systematic way. <coughs> I can draw the following diagrams. Suppose in this diagram along the horizontal axis, I am taking T i that is the time devoted by player 1 and suppose V i is here, it is given, it is a parameter. Now, uh, we have just seen that what is important is how the time of the other player that is T j compares to V i. So, there can be broadly th three cases, one is T j is less than V i, suppose T j is here. Now, depending on different values of T i, there will be different values for the payoff. If T i is somewhere in this range, it is less than T j, then I know the payoff is going to be represented by a 45 degree line, this angle is 45 degree, except for the point here. So, this point is not included. If T i is just equal to T j, the player gets half of V i minus T j. So, half of V i is somewhere here minus T j. So, it is negative. This is what the player gets. And if T i is greater than T j, then uh, player 2 is considering first, the j, player j is considering first, then player 1 get, uh, player i is getting the object and is what it is getting is V i minus T j and V i minus T j remains as it is as T i goes on rising. this is the line. Now, one thing which uh, should be clear from this is that uh, once my rival is giving up and I am getting the object, it does not matter how much t I had committed in the beginning. So, even if t is very high, it is not affecting my payoff as long as t j is here in this which is less than v i and as long as my T i is greater than uh, his T j. Now, if this is the situation, then what is the optimal time that player i shall devote in fighting this war? So, every player I know is going to maximize the payoff. Here the maximum value of the payoff function is occurring when T i is strictly greater than T j. In that case, uh, this is the value of the payoff, which is positive, and this cannot be bettered. So, that is what the best response function of i should look like. Uh, if Tj is less than Vi, 
then T i should be strictly greater than T j. This is what we are going to write down a little bit later. This is the case of V i equaling T j. So, like before we have this 45 degree line except this point at this point he is getting half V i minus T j this is the point which is representing his payoff if T i is equal to T j and if uh, T i is greater than T j uh, then his payoff is V i minus T j which is 0. So, it is coinciding with this axis. Here also uh, and this point is not included, this point is not included. <coughs> uh, here also the aim of the player i is to maximize the payoff. Now, if he wants to maximize the payoff, the maximum payoff that he can get is 0, otherwise it is negative and 0 is obtained in two cases. Uh, one is that T i is equal to 0, this point origin or if T i is strictly greater than T j. In that case also he is coinciding, payoff function is coinciding with the horizontal axis and the player is getting 0. Finally, we shall consider the case of T j greater than V i. So, uh, here as before, as long as T i is less than T j, it is going to be uh, this 45 degree line. At this point, uh, it is going to be <coughs> half of V i minus T j. So, I am getting this point, this point is excluded and if T i is greater than T j, then uh, what the player is getting is uh, V i minus T j which is negative. So, I am getting this line, uh, parallel line to the horizontal axis and yeah. <coughs> so, in this case uh, the best player I can do is to get 0 and that he gets if T i is equal to 0. So, putting all this together suppose I want to write down the best response function of player 1. T i let us see how it will look like. Firstly, if T 2 is less than V i this case, this is T j is equal to V i, this is T j is greater than V i. If T uh, 2 is less than V 1, then I know that uh, player 1 is going to choose T 1 strictly greater than T 2. So, 
Secondly, let us take the second case. Uh, if T2 is just equal to V1, this case, the case in between. Uh, in that case, uh, there are two best response, uh, there are two sets of best responses. One is T1 is equal to 0. or T1 is strictly greater than Tj, T2. So, this is the range that I am talking about or strictly greater than T2 if T2 is equal to V1. And finally, if uh, T2 is greater than V1, <coughs> uh, then I know that player 1 will choose only 0. So, T1 is equal to 0 if T2 is greater than V1. So, this is the basis of function of player uh, 1. For player 2, it will be similar. Let me just write it down. Okay. So, this is how the best response functions are and we can now draw the best response functions and find out the intersection points. So, suppose uh, let us suppose without loss of generality that V 1 is strictly greater than V 2. So, V 2 is here, this is the and V 1 is here suppose. Uh, first, let us draw uh, this best response function of player 1 V 1 T 2. If T 2 is less than V 1, then T 1 is strictly greater than T 2. So, this is the point 45 degree line. I can imagine this is the 45 degree line. If T 2 is less than V 1, then T 1 should be strictly greater than T 2. Now, this point is not included because T 1 has to be strictly greater than T 2 and if T 2 is equal to V 1, T 1 is either 0 or T 1 is strictly greater than T 2. So, this point is not included and this point is included. If T 2 is greater than V 1, T 1 is equal to 0. So, I am taking this axis. So, this is how the best response function of player 1 looks like. Uh, what about the best response function of player 2? If T 1 is less than V 2, T 1 is less than V 2, I am talking about this then T 2 is strictly greater than T 1. 
So, this axis is included, entire axis except the origin and all these points are included. The points on the 45 degree are not included. If T 1 is equal to V 2, then either T 2 is equal to 0. So, this point or T 2 is strictly greater than T 1. So, this line is included. If T 1 is greater than V 2, then T 2 is equal to 0. So, this axis itself. So, this is how it looks like. <coughs> now, putting these things two things together, what we have uh, found is the Nash equilibria uh, or the points where the two base stress functions are overlapping with, with each other are occurring in this part that is in V 2 and greater than V 2 if T 1 is equal to V 2 or greater than V 2 and T 2 is equal to 0 or in this part that is uh, T 1 is equal to 0, T 2 is equal to V 1 or greater than V 1. So, Nash equilibria T 1 is equal to 0 we are talking about this or T 1 is strictly greater than equal to V 2, T 2 is equal to 0. So, there are two sets of Nash equilibria here. In particular, there are infinite number of Nash equilibria. <laughs> now, this is the result, <coughs> but what does it mean? What is the intuition? The intuition is that uh, let us talk about this first set of equilibria that is T 1 is equal to 0, T 2 is greater than equal to V 1. Here T 2 that is player 2's time concession time is either equal to player 1's valuation or greater than players, uh, player 1's valuation. Now, in this case obviously, if player 1 wants to fight with player 2 either he will get 0. Uh, because if T 1, if T 2 is equal to V 1 and T 1 is also equal to V 1, uh, uh, then in fact, player 1 will get negative payoff. So, th there is no way he can get a 0 payoff either. If T 2 is greater than V 1, uh, player 1 can fight with player 2 and can win the object, but its payoff is going to be negative because V 1 minus T 2 is going to be negative. So, by deviating by choosing any positive time uh, player 1 can only be worse off. So, that is why he is sticking to 0. From player 2's point of view also uh, it is not worthwhile to do something else uh, because here what is the payoff of player 2? Player 2's payoff is uh, in this Nash equilibrium it is getting V 2 minus T j which is T 1 which is equal to V 2 because T 1 is equal to 0. So, player 2 is getting the entire value of the object he is not losing anything and so this is the best thing he can do he cannot deviate and be better off. So, that is why this is a Nash equilibrium for from uh, both sides say by similar logic this is also a Nash equilibrium. In the second case, it is player 1 who is getting the object, and player 2 is not getting the object. So, that is how uh, it is. Now, uh, some quick observations. First is that in this Nash equilibrium, <coughs> uh, there is no fight in equilibrium because you see one of the players is always giving up in the beginning itself he is not fighting 
the other player uh, is announcing some fighting time, but since the other player the, the first player is not fighting which in fact means that uh, in the equilibrium there is no fight. Secondly, who obtains the object which means that in the equilibrium it may very well happen that I value the object less and still I get the object. So, it is not necessarily it is not necessary that the, the player who object values the object uh, more he or she will get the object. In this case for example, we had assumed that V 1 is equal to V 2 is greater than greater than V 2 that is player 1 values the object more than player 2 but we had this equilibrium uh, here player 1 is not getting the object, but player 2 is getting the object. Uh, so, it means that even if you value the object less uh, you might still get the object. And finally, The equilibrium is asymmetric. Uh, if one remembers the definition of uh, symmetric game and symmetric equilibrium, uh, if we make this game into a symmetric game by assuming V 1 is equal to V 2, uh, then the game becomes a symmetric game. Now, in that case, uh, it does not mean that the we have a equilibrium which is symmetric because in the equilibrium the actions of players are different they are not the same and that was the property of the symmetric equilibrium. So, uh, that the actions must be the same. <coughs> so, uh, this game does not have any symmetric equilibrium even if we make the game symmetric. <coughs> now, on this uh, idea of war of attrition we can look some other aspects of this war of attrition. This is a variation of this uh, original game. Each player attaches no value to the time spent waiting for the other player to concede, but the object in dispute loses value as time passes. Assume that the value of the object to each player i after t units of time is V i minus t and the value of a, of a 50 percent chance of obtaining the object is half of V i minus t. Specify the strategic game that models this situation, construct the player's best response functions and find the Nash equilibria of the game. So, here what is important is that uh, I do not attach any value to the time that I am spending in getting the object. Uh, but the object itself is depleting. So, more we fight the more the object depletes. So, suppose what, what difference does it make to the original model? The difference it makes is that suppose I concede uh, first and he is getting the object. In the original game it was the case that I was getting minus T i if T i is less than T j. And in this case, I do not attach any value to this time that I spent. So, th in that case when T i is less than T j, uh, the payoff of player i will be 0 in this case instead of, instead of minus T i. And second difference that we are seeing here is uh, there is uh, if the, 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 the two players are considering at the same point of time, then each is uh, getting half of V i minus T. So, that is also something different in the previous case we had half of V i uh, then minus uh, T i if T i and uh, T j are equal.
Okay, so this is an exercise uh, about war of attrition. Let me first uh, write down the exercise, the question of the exercise, and then we shall try to solve it. So, this is uh, the direct argument for Nash equilibrium in war of attrition. Uh, so, this is the question, give a direct argument not using information about the entire best response functions uh, for the set of Nash equilibria of the war of attrition. First, le let us remember what was the Nash equilibrium or the set of Nash equilibria uh, in the war of attrition game. then we shall try to uh, give a direct argument why is it so. So, there are two sets of Nash equilibria, uh, one is this set, the T 1 is equal to 0 and the T 2's are all greater than or equal to V 1 and V 1 is remember the valuation of player 1 for the object, this is one set of Nash equilibria and the other set of Nash equilibria is that uh, T 2 is equal to 0 that is player 2 is spending no time and T 1 is greater than or equal to V 2, V 2 is the valuation of player 2 for the object. Now, how do we prove that this is indeed the Nash equilibria? What we are going to do is that we are going to rule out all other pairs of T 1 and T 2 as candidates for Nash equilibrium. Okay. 
So, what is the complementary set or what are the other possibilities? Other pairs of T 1, T 2 could be the following cases case 1 T 1 is equal to T 2. Remember in this case in the Nash equilibrium since V 1 and V 2 are always greater than 0, uh, it is never the case in Nash equilibrium that T 1 is equal to T 2. So, if we rule out this case T 1 is equal to T 2 that basically gets rid of a lot of possibilities. So, why T 1 is equal to T 2 not a Nash equilibrium candidate? If T 1 is equal to T 2, then each player has a profitable deviation. How do I know that? Because at T 1 is equal to T 2, uh, what is u i? u i is equal to half of v i minus t i, right. This is the payoff function in uh, war of attrition game. So, if player i, i can be uh, 1 or 2. Uh, increases her T i by by infinitesimal small amount then her payoff becomes he gets in this case the complete V i minus T j which is a time spent by j. Now, remember uh, between 1 and 2 between 1 and 2 t i is equal to t j because uh, the other players uh, time in case of 1 was equal to T i, here T i is equal to T j. So, therefore, in 2 i s payoff is greater, thus there is a profitable deviation. So, T 1 is equal to T 2 is not Nash equilibrium. Now, this is case 1. What are the other cases? The other cases are the following case 2. Let us suppose T i and T j are not equal and the T which is less suppose that is T i is uh, greater than 0. So, this is so this is one possibility that T i and T j are not equal, but the lower T is still greater than 0. 
remember this is ruled out in the, this is not the case in Nash equilibrium because in the Nash equilibrium the lower t is always equal to 0. Now, can this be a Nash equilibrium? This cannot be a Nash equilibrium because here u i is equal to minus t i. If i chooses t i is equal to 0, then her payoff rises to 0. So, 0 less than t i less than t j cannot be a Nash equilibrium. So, this is the second case which is being ruled out. What is the third case that can be there and which has to be ruled out? It is the case that suppose t i is equal to 0, but t j is not greater than v i, t j is less than strictly less than v i that again we have to rule out. So, this is case 3. this is just equal to T i and this is less than V i. All right. Now, why this is not a Nash equilibrium? This is not a Nash equilibrium because what is player i getting here? U i is equal to 0, because he is spending no time, he is uh, giving up in the very beginning. So, the payoff that he is receiving is also 0, but can he do better off? But he can choose T i strictly greater than T j, where T i is less than v i, because remember t j is less than v i. So, there is a gap between t j and v i, uh, player i can place his t i in that gap. If he does so, his payoff becomes v i minus t j and which is greater than 0. Therefore, he has a profitable deviation hence 0 equal to t i strictly less than t j strictly less than v i cannot be a Nash equilibrium or let us say cannot be Nash equilibria, because here there are many possibilities are there. All right. So, the only possibility we are left to it is 0 is equal to T i right less than T j and uh, this T j could be uh, greater than V i. So, let us write it like this. Hmm. 
Okay. So, this is the only possibility that we are left with. Uh, this is a Nash equilibrium. Why this is a Nash equilibrium? Or let us say this is uh, these are Nash equilibria. because no player can deviate be and better be better off. Player j is getting the maximum that he can get. So, there is no possibility of improving his payoff. Player i also cannot deviate and be better off because the other players t is greater than uh, his valuation. Uh, before we wrap up this lecture, what we have been doing in this uh, lecture, let me sum it up. We have introduced a new concept, a new uh, application of Nash equilibrium in this lecture, which is called the war of attrition, where the two parties are fighting over some common object. And the longer they fight, the worse it is for both of them. And uh, if uh, the players think that uh, by uh, out, but by fighting more, fighting for a longer time, they can get the object. Uh, so, that is what they are trying to do. They are going, going to get, they are trying to get as much payoff from the, uh, from this fight as possible. But we have seen that in the Nash equilibrium, what will happen is that on, only one player will get the object and the other player is not going to fight. So, in the equilibrium, there is not going to be any fight either player 1 gets the object, object or the player 2 gets the object. Uh, the player which is who is not getting the object is going to concede immediately, he is not going to fight. And this is a case where the equilibrium is asymmetric in the sense that uh, the time that players uh, say that they are going to fight uh, for in the, in the equilibrium, they are going to be different. Uh, so, that is the conclusion of this model. We have uh, considered one variation of the model and we have seen that in that variation also the, the, the equilibrium is such that only one player is getting the object and the uh, equilibrium is asymmetric in the sense that the times are different. Thank you. Briefly describe the war of attrition game. So, let us describe the war of attrition game. Two players actions So, T i is a non negative number. Each player is choosing a T i and this is what is known as a concession time, the time at which you are conceding the game to the others. In effect, the game uh, is a waiting game, two players are waiting for the other to concede for the other player to concede. Uh, if any player concedes earlier than his rival, then that player loses the object. There is an object uh, thereafter. If I concede before my competitor, the object goes to the other player and while I was waiting for this object, uh, I was incurring some cost also. So, the preferences can be written by this.
So, this is the payoff of player i given that he has chosen T i and the other player has chosen T j. So, if he consists earlier, uh, but he has already waited for T i amount of time and that is costly. So, he loses uh, this amount of time which is minus T i. What if they concede at the same time, then there is a half probability, half chance that each will get the object. So, in this case if T i is equal to T j with half probability I will get the object all right, and the valuation of the object to player i is given by V i. So, half V i minus T i the time that has been spent in waiting and this is equal to V i minus T j if T i is greater than T j. So, if I have waited for more uh, for a longer time than my competitor, then I get V i minus T j, T j is the time at which my competitor gives up. What are the Nash equilibria in the war of attrition game? What are its properties? So, Nash equilibrium in war of attrition game is given by the following there are infinite Nash equilibrium. One set of Nash equilibria is given by this and the other set is given by this. So, in the first case player 1 gives up immediately and player 2 gives up after T 1 sorry after V 1. In the second case player 2 gives up immediately and player 1 uh, gives up after V 2. Properties uh, there is no fight. because uh, in each case one player is giving up immediately. Nobody is waiting for the other player to concede, uh, other player to concede yes. Uh, allocation of object is independent of one's valuation. So, it might very well be the case that V 1 is greater than V 2, but player 2 could get the object. Thirdly, uh, equilibria are asymmetric, okay. asymmetric equilibria in the sense this is not the strict definition of uh, you know symmetric equilibrium and as asymmetric equilibrium. Uh, what we mean is that in equilibrium uh, the times are different and this uh, property of a non-equal time will hold even if we make the game sort of symmetric by assuming V 1 is equal to V 2 even if the valuation of the first player is equal to the valuation of the second player in equilibrium uh, uh, there will be no such outcome where T 1 is equal to T 2. So, these are the uh, answers to the exercise. Mm -hmm.